Hello? Well, thanks for the previous presentation. Uh, I like the Q&A session, so I hope we'll have questions afterwards. So today I'm going to present you a um, difficult point, I think, because we're talking, uh, we're talking about ISA 95, and especially architecture that are uh, rigid, the pyramid what, that we often see, and how you unified namespace and bits of ISA 95 could help to, to be more dynamic. For that, I don't come alone, and I shouldn't talk only from my experience. So I wanted to do like kind of uh, like Walker Reynolds did with uh, Dennis Brendel. So here uh, we've got the kind of colleague of Dennis uh, in France. He's French, uh, Jean Vieille. He couldn't join us today, but he's, he lives in Paris. And Jean and Dennis, they know each other, and they, they write the specification or co-write the specification uh, together, so they've got 40 years old in the industry each, so 80 years old of uh, experience. They contribute; they are contributors of the, the standards, and they create committees and they, they do all the, uh, the animation with the, the various experts that contribute. So, and of course, they published a numerous amount of, um, of paper. So who I am? Vincent Tabankam. So first of all, I'm an engineer uh, working for Volvo bus and trucks, largest truck ever built. We had to remove all the lamps and, uh, on the ceiling, so much it was big. We never built so, such a huge amount of trucks. Uh, then at some point, uh, I went also uh, not too far away, not too far ago, uh, I presented at the keynote a large project, 42 billion laser dots on uh, drones that are bigger than myself. Uh, there's only 10 uh, drones as big as that in the world uh, for SNCF uh, railway station. And uh, it, it was dealing with IoT, the cloud, uh, edge, at, uh, AI at the edge also, that comes from the cloud going to the, the edge. And not, uh, well, in 22 year, uh, four years ago, I created Factovia. Factovia, I'm the owner of Factovia, and I created a mini, I kind of invented a way to help people understand rapidly what is Industry 4.0. Because I failed so many years telling, yeah, Industry 4.0 is this, in conference like that. I found out that there are, there's more efficient way to to convince people by themselves, in fact, they manipulate what is Industry 4.0. And we've been using this material on 11,000 people, and we convince majority of the people. So today, I'm going to share my experience, and I want it to be, it to be from the trenches, from really some of my customers are here, many, well, few of them are here. Uh, even in the medical healthcare, they are, they are here. So the problems, what, what are the problems? Why do we need 4.0 uh, to help us in terms, especially on big data and apply AI? Some solutions, of course, if, you are, if we are here, we know about UNS, I'm not going to detail what is UNS, and MQTT, of course. And if we've got the time, uh, we will talk about some tools that could help us in the long journey, three years, five years of digital transformation, and the risk of failure. Very often time, even today, we talk about people who arrive and they say, oh, I've got this and that, and this is the pattern that we know that, it's, unfortunately, it's gonna fail. So if you are into this pattern, those patterns, I just picked three of them, of course, if we, ha we have got many patterns of failure, uh, it's red alert. So just be careful. And anyway, if we don't have the time, we will, we will have the, the presentation as a PowerPoint. So it might be you. It might be you using uh, ISA 95. 33% uh, of the people are, might be concerned uh, using uh, the, the pyramid because usually it's large company. Large company, if small company, they don't, of course, do that. It's too big. So we will see uh, how complicated uh, it, it is. 
to use that pyramid. So um, talking about uh, how complex, we, we are going to talk about problems. So let's, let's see here in this picture, one of my customer, uh, we see here the, the pyramid. And of course, at the very top, you've got a decision maker. At the very bottom, you've got the people who produce, who, who pile the, the cardboard boxes, who, who sends the, the cardboard boxes into trucks. And those guys, it's where you've got the value. It's where you, they transform the, the product. And sometimes the, the system, the IT system says, OK, you have to go to door 22. And then if the door 22 is blocked, they go somewhere else, of course, because they have to produce. But the problem is that the system doesn't know ERP system. So they have, it's piloted by the IT system, and people are just, they, they hate that IT system for months because it costs sometimes, it costs half a million dollars to modify this ERP. So, and the value is at the very bottom of the, the pyramid. So of course, if the, the, the door is blocked, you just change the door, the truck will arrive here. It's easy to change the process. But in terms of IT, you have to, to comply to the solution. And the, the guy, every day, they bring the cardboard boxes onto the, the theoretical door that is known by the ERP and QR code flash and then bring that back every day, every day. So they just hate IT. It's awful. It's a nightmare. So this pyramid, sometimes it's a nightmare. And we're going to see uh, how or why we are in, uh, leading, why are we in this situation? And how can we change this situation without doing the big bang and change everything? So for that, I like when Walker Reynolds said, okay, the, the right hand doesn't know what the left hand does. In this example, at the top of the pyramid, when we arrive, we've been called to say, okay, Vincent, we want to improve the situation. We want to understand what's going on in the, in the factory to bring the data up in the hierarchy and have visibility. Of course, everyone knows for many years, machine to machine, you connect the machine, you bring the data, it works. But it's only in college or kids' uh, school that works like that. You take a Raspberry Pi, you connect to a PC, oh, that works. That's why you've got just one letter on the top, it's not just IoT, it's IIoT. This one letter is hell a lot more complex because we have to take into account of the various firewalls, the, the old generation of um, systems. So that's a kind of jungle. We'll see later on, it's complicated. So here, for example, we tried our best. We install, you know, just one day. We arrive in the morning, we say, okay, let's install, uh, install PTC Capware. We're going to, on this computer, uh, at the top of the pyramid here, we install everything. We got granted all the access possible. And these security guys, they said, I don't understand why it doesn't work. And for us, we didn't know how, why it didn't work. We were kind of just, it was awful situation. Everything in theory should work. We got all the plans, all the sheet of paper, all the authorization. It takes a long time, as you might imagine. When we arrived, nothing works. At some point, the, the chief security officer, he said, hey, Vincent, take the computer from these stairs, we've got three factories, and let's go to the shop floor. We plug this wire in on this computer, and it worked. Wow, that's wonderful. It's not our fault. With uh, my team, we were, whoa, that's so good. So it means somewhere along the line, there's a firewall, there's a hidden mysterious gateway we don't know, and they don't know. And I know uh, working from uh, bank, bank insurance, that sometimes they've got, uh, that's a story, I believe it's true. Sometimes they break walls like, like this, they break a wall and they find a computer, like a AS400, still running, they didn't know it was there. But it's kind of situation, because why the, st the, the factory, it's got uh, 20 years old there, people come and go, and of course the documentation is not accurate. So when you want to do IoT, it's complicated. But the standard never said to be <clears throat> so rigid to put all those uh, regulation and all those rules as we will see. That's why I wanted 
not to come here and state this statement like this, out of the loo. I came with a Jean Vieille who guarantee that uh, the, the spirit of the, the, the standard is that way. Because he wrote, and that's the guy who wrote the standard, so he knows better than everyone the, the spirit of it. So I'm not going to enter into the details, but uh, as we might know, we've got many levels uh, on the pyramid. We've got the, the level zero, one, two, three, four, sometimes five. Five and the five uh, could be the cloud, for example. And very often we said, okay, there's a bridge between those layers. And as Marc Akuto said, it's th the, the limitation is uh, not due to a kind of standard. It's just historically you had to use uh, wires, serial wires to connect this piece of equipment to this one. And it's just a matter of uh, ancient systems. And then because we've got this ancient system, people said, oh, look, this is how we should do. And then they copy paste. And they don't know, they forgot about the, the history of the, um, the standard. This leads to this situation. When sometimes we go to really big corporate, that's why I said, this might be you, maybe this is not. I don't know the, the audience. Who, who's working in this situation with the uh, ISA 95, with the triangle? Yeah, a few. Yeah. So I know some people that, that you didn't raise your hand. Yeah, a little, because uh, <laughs> some people are scared to say, yeah, unfortunately, I'm in this situation. Uh, so, okay, it's maybe five, five, six people here in the audience. So it's 6%, not 33%. But still, for those 6%, I know one of my friends in Switzerland, uh, this pyramid is really complex. It's months and months and months of procedures and paperwork. But, uh, for example, I'm going to take this example. At the very top of the pyramid, you've got the corporate level. So corporate level, it's ivory tower. There's no factory at all. There's uh, paperwork and people work there. Uh, you've got the big boss of the corporate. You've got uh, the IT guy, security guys for the corporate. And because the corporate uh, is at the ivory tower, we copy paste that sometimes we outsource that into another country. Very often it works like that. And we've got a kind of uh, symmetry or complementary. For example, the top manager of the cloud, uh, or some, sometimes I've got uh, some project manager, worldwide project manager, who lives abroad. And he manages factories here in France. So we've got a barrier, of, uh, language barrier, because that guy, he doesn't master English. French guys in factories that don't speak English, they are scared about English. So I, I can imagine, uh, let's imagine the situation. I speak English, that not, that's not the best English ever, but those guys, it's, they, they don't want, they, they see English, they, so we cannot work. How can you put somewhere abroad like this and work into this transformation? This transformation, even if you live, reside in the same factory, it's complicated. Here, Rija uh, is here, uh, Poclin. Uh, his, I call him Superman. He's, he's like uh, out of the nine factories, within eight months, he managed to, to move all the factories together to do digitalization. This is a real challenge. So if you are abroad, you don't speak the language, you, you put all the, the chances to fail on, on your side. So why do you, you want to do that? On, to, on the top of that, every single factory, factory side A, side B, they have got the same uh, triangle system. So you've got the big boss of site A, you've got the big boss of site B. So when we want to put IoT, like what we did here, this single wire, with this single wire, it's easy because I had the chance to have the big boss and to have the security guys and everything. So could you imagine here? It's impossible. So after sometimes large corporate, after three years, four years, five years, trying to put this single plug, it doesn't work. Um, and up, for example, what I just want to do, what is the need? It's not uh, just put a wire. As a business owner, my team is suffering daily and they're doing error-prone tasks. They print something, 
because uh, we've got the layers. They just print a sheet of paper. This sheet of paper is printed. We stick here. We move that cardboard there. We scan that. OK, we change to another layer. So that's so kind of stupid. And those guys, every day, they do that. And they say, oh, we just print a sheet of paper and we scan within 15 minutes. And we could just put a wire on Wi-Fi. So that's complex again. And they just want that. I want automation. I want to suffer less. And Mr. Andrew, because its name is Andrew, with Andrew, we find a solution. With the solution, technical solution, is always easy because it's been invented long time ago. It's IoT. Within one day, we fix the solution. We put the solution within one day. To be more precise, two half a days. So within half a day, solution is there. Because people don't understand, OK, let's do it again after a few months. Even we can give it for free. It's half a day. It's, I mean, it's nothing. You just wake up in the morning. Uh, lunchtime, it's finished. So this is the size of a project of connecting a real factory for RATP, for example. I arrive in the morning, evening time, at the car park. The project is finished. When air, all the conditions are uh, uh, with you, it's really easy. But the structure is complex. We've got the boss of this, the boss of that. It's, uh, sometimes we've got 20 decision makers in the email. And every single uh, time, we find other uh, boss. So I had to, to keep a sheet of paper of a wiki. OK, new boss. OK, this boss is the boss of this and that. So when I do this, so uh, it's really complicated. The, the good thing is that I'm external. So I can arrive and say, oh, sorry, I'm stupid. And please tell me your role. Who is your boss? Who are you working with? But internally, they don't even know for real. Again, like what, are, what Walker said, the left hand doesn't know what uh, his other colleague is doing. It's really the case. So why 4.0 and how IIoT could help with big data especially? And uh, why do, do we want to put uh, AI and data science? I'm going to take an example, just a very basic example. Everyone in the kitchen, in your own kitchen, you can do that. Uh, Let's, you want to cook a chicken for your family, your wife, your kids. And of course, either you've got wonderful chicken, it's tasty, roasted, or this is disgusting. For that, let's just consider four parameters. Four parameters, the temperature, the fan, the height. You want it at the top of the oven or at the bottom, and the chicken size, small, medium, large. So with all those numbers, like we studied at that school, we can make a, a long sheet of uh, combinations. Sometimes I, I spend months doing combinations. If I change this, I do that. It's easy with chicken. When you do with large factory, like what we said, it's months of Excel sheet files. It's a long time. When I was in G Healthcare as an employee, I just spent my whole life doing Excel. It's kind of frustrating. I just want, for one day of work, I just put many months of Excel files. It is, it, this is really frustrating. So imagine in a real factory, what, uh, how does it look like? For example, Veresence. Uh, when you, in France, it's uh, perfume, luxury perfumes and stuff like that. When you've got not one chicken, but 230 references. So big chicken, small chicken, the, the, the shape are totally different. It's complicated to have um, the real end product. Now, how are you going to pr uh, produce this end product? You don't have four or five parameters. You've got at least 1,000. 1,000 for an experimented person, uh, it's called intuition. It just works like this. It's, uh, he's been working all, all his life. He just, oh, let's put that here. I put a bit of hammer there and go there. And that's for real, even for textile in the medical healthcare textile. Uh, my friend is working there, Marichu. Is, uh, they go with a hammer, for real, this is healthcare. I mean, you've got the machine, you just put hammer like this. And uh, you, you can't just ask a young kid to, to arrive and to do the same. You've got uh, too many parameters. So we don't have like a chicken uh, limited amount of combination. You've got nearly an infinite number of combinations. This is called experience. 
So when someone goes in retirement, the young kid, to master this, it's not uh, in this situation, Veresense, it's not a three months uh, training, it's not six months, it's 10 years. So the trainee is there for 10 years. After 10 years, he could hammer the, the machine and say, okay, I'm going to blow a little bit here, do that. And then, yeah, the customer, Chanel, he asked me the bottle like this. Okay, finally, my God, I finished, uh, I can make the bottle. So this is a huge number of, uh, yeah, expertise that you have to have. And why do we want to have this? We want to understand the, the impact on the product uh, when you change the parameter. You want to optimize to have less defect. For example, uh, when we produce uh, glasses for the, 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 win, the, um, the windows, we want to predict the, the defect of the glass because otherwise when you've got a defect, you cannot sell. So the more defect you've got, uh, the, the more waste you've got. So, for example, Renault, uh, yesterday, uh, we, we had a nice dinner with uh, Renault, Nissan, Mitsubishi. We know that using those methods of gathering the data real time and deciding real time, just decreasing by three degrees the, 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 the oven uh, temperature times uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week worldwide, plus other improvements, it's minus. 80 million uh, dollars per year, 80 million dollars. Just trying to find your chicken and uh, the height of the chicken, the big, small. So this is worthwhile to, to spend some, some time in doing digital. Of course, the impact of the environment is important too. Uh, with uh, Adira, my uh, partner, we, we work on, um, on pump that uh, generates, that will eat this heat and convert into uh, cold. Instead of uh, um, spending time, money, and uh, energy to produce uh, a room for your server room with a cold, you can recycle this heat and recreate cold nearly for free. So you, we've got solutions also to not only decrease the number of temperature, but to have impact on CO2 by kind of hacking the, 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 the existing factory. Also, this is a good situation to keep the, not of course the senior, he has to go in retirement because he deserved it when working every day in this situation, he deserved going in retirement, but at least we could keep his expertise when we capture that into big data and with AI to model his expertise, this is just wonderful, that's what we want to, to have. So of course, what I said here for one factory times many factories, again, we need big data in the middle. Big data in the middle, you cannot put one server in the middle, you cannot to put two, three, four, five, it's a big data. So now we're talking serious, big data, that's a big word, yeah. industry 4.0, big data. Of course, a human being cannot read the big data, your huge massive Excel file. You need a model, AI model, for example. And if we zoom in into one factory, we will see the layers. The layers, again, I'm not going to enter into the details. Normally, you should know uh, inside, inside it. But at least, I'm not bec um, I will not, again, detail the, the inside, but I will explain the need. For example, as the owner of Factovia, uh, I'm a CEO, and what do I want from my company? I want, let's say, to see my aggregated revenue and the spending that we're having in real time, not to wait one year or one fiscal year and maybe two, two extra months. It's too long if we're losing three degrees. You saw that uh, for Renault, three degrees real time of saving, it's a hell a lot of money at the end of the, of the year. If I'm waiting one year and I cannot know exactly where I'm going, it's difficult. I want that real time. And I know, Rija, you're, you're working quite a lot on getting those data, those insights in real time. This is important. And the, the difficulties is that you want to aggregate those data per day. Okay, ah, that's, that's interesting per day. But what, what again happens if I want to aggregate uh, on the year, on the week, 
on the monthly basis. So we want to do that in real time. We all know for decades that it exists. It's called a uh, data warehouse. We could do that in data warehouse for ages. But data warehouse, you have to export, extract the data every day, and then to wait and compute for hours. And maybe some big data, it's one day. You have to wait the next day to get the reports. One, one day of losing, I don't know, three degrees of temperature is a nightmare already. So could you imagine if you have to wait one, one year before knowing where you are? It's complicated. So we want to have uh, that real time to have immediate actions, not in 12 months. So that's the need. And what's inside here, I just represent the slow motion between the information that is at the very bottom that goes up. Sometimes it's sheet of paper, and sometimes it's sheet of paper that is dummy. I mean, people, they just fill in forms because you've been tasked to fill forms. Sometimes I go to the factory, uh, I meet the, the operators, and I saw the boss, say, you fill that form. Okay, boss, I fill the form. And then one month after, I said, wow, wonderful, you fill the forms, 100%. I said, I don't believe you, you just feel crap, it's impossible. Yeah, but we want to have nice grades and bonus. And yeah, but is it real? Well, no. But uh, my task is to fill forms. I just fill forms. And then I go to see the boss. The boss, he got huge amount of sheet of paper. I said, did you read the, all the reports that every day the guys are filling in? I said, no, I don't have the time. So it's like uh, in France, we've got a Shadok uh, a TV show where, where people are digging. And you know why you're digging? Well, I don't know. But uh, maybe something bizarre could happen if you don't dig. OK, good. Uh, uh, carry on digging. So it's really in this situation. So why don't you step back and have a look on what you want to achieve? What I want to achieve is this. So it's not complicated. Again, if you take this pyramid and you put that at scale, global worldwide, it's a global worldwide zoo. Because what you've got here, it's the jungle. And because of that jungle, you've got uh, apple, pears, you want to compare. And uh, I will have a real example. Uh, here, for example, and here, of course, you've got tools, but imagine the number of colors. It's different tools and in English. So here you've got different tools in French, different tools in Spanish and in Chinese. How are you going to do the sums? In the US, you've got uh, feet, you've got uh, inches. In France, you've got uh, meters. You've got French, uh, euros, you've got US dollars. This is just a nightmare. Of course, that's where the number three arrives. We need unification. This is as basic as that. We just need unification. So we unify everything. So the zoo is still the zoo because you still have English, French, or whatever. But before the zoo, when we receive a sheet of paper, oh my god, English, OK, search, replace. French, oh no, we've got a bizarre accent. In Spanish, we've got the question mark on, on the reverse. Okay, search and replace. So people are doing that all day long, like digging again. Why, why are you digging? I don't know, because I've got question mark on the other side. So I have to redo it. Of course, we cannot do the sums properly. So we just want to unify and make the flow uh, goes rapidly. And that's all we want. So the solutions is the single source of truth not the jungle. And of course, now unify namespace. What we can see and observe in the International Society of Automation is, for example, this diagram. This diagram is the triangle that I show you. And by magic, you have the second diagram, kind of network internet diagrams. But you cannot go into a factory telling the big boss, hello, big boss. We're going to change this, fac this factory, this triangle, into that. Believe me, this is wonderful, and it's going to work within half a day. They will become crazy, because in large company, if you've got millions of procedures, you cannot just go from there, big bang, into that. What, at least, I will, I will show you what I do as an approach, agile approach, and a smooth transition. Uh, I, will, I will show that later on. So this was done in year 2021. Uh, and we know the, the author, for example, Dennis, and uh, 
uh, Charlotta. So they are big names. What we can observe here, it's the color. We, we can notice, we keep the same color. This is important because the concept, it's the same. If you want a kind of ERP systems, still the need is there. So I, ISA 95 is talking about not technology, not a PLC here, firewall there. They are talking about concept. To be more precise, they are talking about domain. So in, as if you are a developer, like uh, I see here some, some guys in the audience, uh, we were talking about DDD. So we're talking about domain. That's the best of the best uh, developer, if you, if you like, DDD, three Ds. Uh, and we are here keeping the same domain, but we are change, changing the, the shape. Because we cannot go into a factory and say, yeah, we are going to do the big bang. What, at least what I'm doing it's, uh, is that following, animation, PowerPoint animation. It's just this, we keep the same thing, same triangle, don't worry, it won't change. It will keep, please keep your hundreds of procedures, don't worry. But please allow us to have one protocol. It's not dangerous. Uh, Schneider Electric is using that protocol. Um, other uh, L'Oreal, Renault, and this protocol behind the scene is MQTT. Please allow us to use MQTT. And for us, that's a major step. You put MQTT, as <laughs> my God. So it means, if you've got MQTT, it means all the prerequisite uh, has been uh, valid. So it means you've got the authorization, all the green passes, you've got uh, everyone authorizing you, you've, got, uh, you've been blessed to put this uh, uh, MQTT. And then you have to find a small but impactful topic. Any reason is good for putting MQTT. So you have to be creative. You be creative. You know, try to find problems. Yeah, what, what's your problem? Ah, but maybe MQTT could help. Oh, yeah, I'm sure it's going to help. So let's start the project with allowing just something, please, allow MQTT. And then from that mini project, so that's the baby step, that's not my invention, it's just a methodology, so it's baby step uh, methodology. And then you can kind of conquer the world uh, from that. So you have to find your baby step. You have to convince uh, through the, the top management, through references. When Gardner said, yeah, UNS is good, that was uh, last year, I said to Walker in, the, in uh, LinkedIn, wow, that's so wonderful, because now I can go to big corporate, even if they don't know what is UNS, we can just show, look, Gardner is saying that. Wow, yeah, Vincent, Vincent, let's go, let's do it. So for me, it was a relief, a relief. So that was good. PTC could say that, so big firms, even if it's wrong, the, the reasoning behind the scene, even if it's wrong, I don't, I don't care. I just want the sheet of paper. And then put again MQTT and uh, UNS. I'm checking the time, 33. So also be free to invent, to invent the, uh, from what the standard said. So again, I'm going to go quick. We've got the zoo, it, it, this is a summary. You've got the zoo, the zookeeper, the, the exit. When you exit, very often time, we've got an OPC DA, 20 years ago when I was playing with a COM and DCOM. Because there's no internet and COM and DCOM now is useless, you put a wrapper into OPC UA. Again, it's many companies are doing that. And what happened often time is that because we've got one jungle here as a producer, producer we've got one jungle here as a consumer. And the poor OPC UA server is start to die. So sometimes, uh, you're, uh, well, it's not great. So what we should do is to put a shield here to say, okay, we stop here, please stop. That's a strategy I used in the past in uh, 10 years ago. Uh, you stop everyone and you see uh, who's ac accessing this. Sometimes no one. You say, yeah, Vincent, you shouldn't touch this. Yeah, but for real, I put a shield, uh, I remove the server, if there's something wrong, I just put the server back using the, um, the DNS. So the server could be back within five minutes if someone complains. Sometimes, after 10 years, no one complains. So that's good. So in fact, uh, some of the calls are only theory. 
according to the sheet of paper, and some of them are real. So I want to detect who is accessing this. And using a shield, you put MQTT here, and you, you authorize those guys to access only through MQTT. And MQTT, because as you know, it could scale, you could massively send information out. So now, the jungle is still there, it's still there, and the jungle as a consumer is still there, but another order. So that's it, I'm going to go quick because uh, my, uh, my time is over. This is an example, as we might know, about organizing the data structure. Uh, I know I, was, I saw one of my customers using this in the medical healthcare. Either you take the standards, you can take uh, complex standard, I mean complex. I took the, just the easiest uh, ISA 95 part two example, otherwise the, it's really complicated. And it's, uh, we don't see here, but it's 295 pages, uh, like that. And some of the people, like in healthcare for Moebius Analytics, uh, here in the audience, uh, they use AI automation to do the mapping between all the various things, which is a gain of time, because everyone could use the, a different ontology, or not exactly the same, but using AI, AI will say, oh, I'm probably here, this is a red apple, this is a, this is a yellow apple, this is still apple, okay, I'm going to put that there. So it's a gain, not, it's not 100% uh, proof, uh, bulletproof, but still it, it's a relief instead of spending many, many uh, months mapping by hand. So that's it, uh, we're reaching the end. So the words of wisdom with, uh, of uh, Jean Vieille is the pyramid is kind of dead, and we must uh, not, well, we shouldn't do here, um, pilot your strategy, strategy using the hardware stuff. Usually people are talking about OT and IT. This is hardware. But the, the philosophy of the standard is more talking about domain. It's a subtlety, but the domain is a kind of bigger, it's a logical area. So you've got only two domains as, as part of the standard. You've got enterprise domain and you've got control domain. The rest is whoever want, wants to implement, you feel free. So it's just a matter of habits. So don't take bad habits and say, yeah, because it's written in the standard. Have you read the standard? Well, and, and then we will see. So that's the word of uh, Jean that I wanted to, to tell. And uh, last, so never stop learning. For example, we had the chance yesterday to, to have dinner with uh, Thierry. Thierry is the world, for me at least, that's the world leader of Industry 4.0, uh, who is the guy who connects Renault, Nissan, Mitsubishi, um, yeah, factories worldwide, and even the uh, OPC UA, the standard, so OPC Foundation is the, uh, the foundation. They are asking Thierry, yeah, can you share your experience so Thierry, even Thierry, he he's learning every day. And I'm learning from Thierry, and Thierry is learning from other people. And it's like today, we just share. And this is how we could improve. Not just reading standards all day long. And that's it. And the tools we will see later on in the <laughs> Thank you.